here I am back talking about why I don't believe in fossilisation. Now, fossilisation is a term used by lots of people who study language acquisition, Oof, by a lot of teachers. They really worry that their students' errors will fossilise. And by a lot of students, because they too worry that their students' errors will fossilise. However, to me, epistemologically, that is, from a knowledge perspective, it is based on an outdated way of thinking. I'll describe the way of thinking that fossilisation is based on, OK? So, James comes along, he wants to learn a language, yeah? He starts here, with his L1. And what he's going to do is he's going to move to here, yeah, with this new language, yeah, which is the standard version of the L2. Fossilisation relies, in my mind, on there being a standard version of the L2. Okay? Now, over time, according to the theory, he is going to move from the L1 to the L2. And what he speaks until he gets to the L2 is called interlanguage. Okay? Now, I don't buy this. Okay? I don't buy this for several reasons. Firstly, I don't think there is a standard version that we're moving towards. Secondly, our brain retains plasticity and can learn new things throughout our life. So why would it be the case that if not corrected early on, a habit could form that was later unchangeable? So, let's look at those two together, yeah? One's from a sociolinguistic perspective. There is no standardised version of an L1, of a language, sorry, okay? Hundreds of, there's, there's millions of speakers of a language all over the world, and they all speak that language differently, yeah? Now, if you're to say that this is the standard version, then you're saying everybody else who doesn't speak this standard version is in some way deficient when compared to that standard version. It's a deficiency perspective, no? But that's not true, is it? That is not true. It would be putting it in those terms. Do you still want to hold that viewpoint? Is the way I speak English deficient compared to a standard version? Is the way you speak English deficient when compared to a standard version? Is the way somebody from a working class community, because standard versions, they're not, this isn't something that's created as well, it's, it, there's nothing good political here. Yet there is. Standard versions are the versions spoken by those in society who are recognised as at the top of the hierarchy. And this, and this idea of a standard version supports that hierarchy. There are thousands of different ways of speaking a language. And just because somebody speaks another language as well as that language or didn't start learning that language when they were a child doesn't mean their, their version is deficient when compared to what has been named a standard version. Think about it like this for a moment. We talked the other day about how sound categories are created. And we spoke to Dr. Dr. Uh, suddenly forgotten her name. 
we spoke to Dr. Garcia, and she said, yeah, that the sound categories you were exposed to in terms of phonemes, yeah, formed the sound categories through which you perceived language. Yeah? And the ones you've been most exposed to, Gem is a child, yeah, they, they form the sound categories for which you perceive language. And it is those sound categories, that knowledge, that abstract implicit mental representation, that pre primarily that dictates how you speak the language, in t phonetically. Now, where the, the sort of, oh God, isn't that fossilization if it's not meeting the standard version? No. There's no such thing as a standard version, so there's no such thing as fossilizing before you get to a standard version. Now, the other thing that people said to me was that if you spoke too early when you were speaking another language, that could lead to you starting to make errors. And those errors would never be, that would, would stay with you, would fossilise. But is that true? Does the brain always retain, this is what Dr Garcia said to us, the brain, go and watch a video about neurology, the brain retains plasticity, okay? So it is not necessary, even if we think, yeah, that the implicit mental representation of language that we have comes from the input that we're surrounded by, yeah? Even if we think that, yeah, it is not necessary to avoid output because speaking too soon leads to errors and those errors fossilise. No. When you get input, when you are exposed more to language, your implicit mental representation, your knowledge of that language will change. So it's not necessary to avoid speaking situations. Often with fossilization, people point to things after a very short amount of time. So they'll be like, look, look, he's still saying it like that. I mean, still saying it like what? differently to the standard version. He's fossilised. Well, one, it doesn't matter if someone's saying things differently to your standard version, because there is no such thing as a standard version. That is a political construction. And two, nothing like that happens. Now, you may say, James, you're saying that most of those sound categories you create as a child. So that is your brain sort of fossilizing. It is very difficult to perceive sounds in other languages that are very, that you can easily confuse at a subconscious level with sounds in a language you spoke previously. That is very difficult. But why does it matter? Because you're not aiming at some standard version. And that would only be fossilization. There will be changes. But those changes won't necessarily meet what someone has in their head as a standard version. But that doesn't matter because the standard version is not a linguistic is not, it's not a cognitive or a linguistic construction. It's a political construction. Think about those things. That's James, future multilingual. Like the video, subscribe to the channel.